talking about crystals and how they can support us, how they can positively influence us so that we can experience um, epic, amazing, fucking fantastic lives, right? There's so many different things that we can utilize to support us feeling good. It's not just crystals, ladies, but, but they're one of many practices that at the end of the day, what do they do? They actually shift our vibration. They raise our vibration. What does that do? Whenever we're vibrating higher and holding a higher frequency, life force frequency, what is that going to mean? It's going to mean we just feel better. We have better health. We look better. We have more creativity, more focus, more confidence. It's just the better it gets, the better it gets. So you can, you can equate a higher vibration to a better life. But <laughs> simply put, right? Okay, Amy, total urban hippie, all your time favorite, oh, your all-time favorite crystal is black tourmaline. Your gateway crystal is citrine. Now you have so many crystals. Yeah, okay, so black tourmaline I absolutely love. Uh, black tourmaline is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful for grounding you, for kind of rooting you, deflecting, kind of protecting you from outside negativity, harsher energies, especially if you're a highly sensitive person or an empath like me, like probably some of you are. And it's also so awesome for um, protecting you from EMFs, electromagnetic frequency that all of our tech devices give off, right? Um, the most effective crystal to actually offset the EMF, I know I'm getting off track here, but it's, it's um, although black tourmaline is great, fluoride is great, amethyst is great, the best one, oh, pyrite is good too, but the best one for EMFs, it's shungite. So this slab, always beside my laptop, it's even where I rest my phone. It's always near my electronic devices, and I usually have a slab um, stuck to the backside of my phone as well. But when I'm not using my phone, I put it on airplane mode to actually turn off the radiation so that it's not um, impacting my field. Okay, ladies, we have a few more in the group. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Say hi. Let's see who you are. I can't tell unless you say a comment. And uh, if you're new, if you just joined, I want to let you know we're kind of sharing about our favorite crystals or perhaps what our gateway crystal was. What was that first one that caught your eye that you were just like, I got to get this, and then you wanted more? <laughs> okay, so back to what I'm talking about. Crystals can affect us. Be, I'm going to talk about a few ways crystals can affect us, and then I'm going to give you specific ones that can affect us. Hi, Stacy. Welcome. Hi, Jacqueline. Welcome. Share your favorite crystals. Stacy, I have a feeling yours might be Amethyst because Stacy has an awesome, awesome group going on called Alchemy and Amethyst or Amethyst and Alchemy. You'll have to correct me on that one. Okay, so the Crystal Kingdom. Here's a big bowl of crystals. Okay, one of my many. Each crystal has its own unique vibration. Each crystal has its own unique frequency. And it's vibrate. So, so first of all, everything on the planet has a vibration. Everything is energy. Everything has a vibration. Something that looks solid has a frequency, right? Our bodies have a frequency. And here's the thing. Even our different kinds of emotions have a different frequency. Crystals have a stable frequency, meaning no matter what's going on in the outside environment, the crystal is holding that vibration. You can come to the crystal in a bad mood, and you're not going to decrease that crystal's vibration or that crystal's frequency. But the human body is different. We're very permeable. We're very influenced by our outside environment. So what does that mean? That means, especially if you're an HSP, highly sensitive person, if you go into an environment where there's a lot of toxicity and negativity and people are complaining and there's gossiping and there's just a bad vibe, depending on where you're at with things, that can actually drain your energy and lower your own vibration. And you can come home from that work environment and feel so drained like you just had the life sucked out of you. And that's because being around that environment literally affected your own energy. It brought it down and you might have needed to come home and take a nap or take a bath or something like that, right? Now with crystals, that doesn't happen to them. They have this high, high frequency that is much higher than the human body's natural frequency. We're typically at around um, a hertz of about 70. Crystals are way higher than that. Um, the plant kingdom has a high frequency too. Healthy foods have a high frequency. Processed canned foods have a lower frequency. When we get sick, we fall into a lower frequency. When we get a disease, a lower frequency. When we're about to cross over, we get as low as the 30s or 40s, right? So um, 
for example, an organic essential oil, it's like a very pure version of that plant. Uh, lavender essential oil has one of the highest frequencies. I think it's around 117. And organic rose essential oil has the highest of the plant kingdom. It gets into the 300s on the Hertz scale. So crystals, just like that, have this very, very high stable frequency. And since the human body is so influenced by the outside environment with our own energy, based on what we're near, based on what we see, what we do, what we hear, what we eat, what we, what we, what we consume, what we watch in the news, our energy gets affected. So what happens when you are simply holding a crystal? What happens when you're simply holding a crystal? Like attracts like, and with uh, the law of attraction, what happens is your own field tries to acclimatize and get in harmony with the resonance. It, it tries to tap into a resonance with the crystal at that higher vibration. So you simply working with crystals, meditating with them, putting them in your bra, tucking them under your pillowcase, tucking one into your purse, having them at your workstation like I do, all of those things that might seem like, how is that actually affecting me? It is. It's helping raise your vibration or maintain your vibration when outside influences might be at play, like at the chaotic office you might work at, okay? Um, another example of this is, you can make a crystal essence. These are all my crystal essences that I make. And what happens with water, water is a highly programmable substance. And this is all science-based, Dr. Emotive studies, you name it. Um, so water takes on the same energy pattern, the same frequency as the crystal that's put into it. Okay, so you would have a cleansed crystal, clean, charged. You can put it right into spring water um, and then there, there's there's a longer method, but Cole's notes version is that water will eventually take on the same energy imprint as the crystal, right? Now think about this, ladies. This is where I want to kind of stimulate this like aha moment is what are you made out of? You're made out of water. You are made out of water. So the water in your body literally takes on this higher vibration just by simply being near the crystal. Um, you, you can like, for example, with my crystal essences, I actually take them... Uh, I'll spray them under my tongue. I'll waft them over my aura, depending on which one I'm working with. And I'll even um, add certain ones to my skincare line because certain crystal essences or, or gemstone energy offers um, beautifying effects to the skin. And then also you're nourishing like the body, mind, and spirit all at the same time. So there's amazing ways you can work with crystal essences, just the way you'd work with a flower essence. It's the same principle. The water takes on the energy pattern as the crystal. And then our bodies being made of water, we can't help but try to acclimatize up to that higher vibration that the crystal's holding, no matter what is going on, right? So I want to first bring up this to just make the concept of crystal healing make a bit more sense. Like, how is this actually affecting me? Well, well there is science behind how it works. Um, that, that's one aspect. And then the, the other aspect is different crystals have a stronger resonance with different chakras of the body, okay? Some crystals actually have a stronger resonance with our root chakra, some with our solar plexus, some with our heart chakra. If, if you're not familiar with the chakra system, I'll just explain really, really quick. Our body has hundreds of chakras all over it, but we have seven primary, which are the biggest ones. You can picture it as a spinning vortex of energy that connects us at all times to universal energy. It comes right through our body, out our backside, okay? Uh, different chakras govern and influence different aspects of how we have our human experience. Uh, starting at the root and working the way up, the root chakra, it's more of our like 3D here in this body human experience. It's very primal, our needs being met, food, shelter. Um, it's also where we'll hold on to an energy pattern of scarcity, lack, not enough. It's also where we can download um, actually through our DNA, uh, ancestral patterns and beliefs that aren't truth, but we've, we've downloaded them through our family tree of not enough and money's hard to come by and money doesn't grow on trees and you have to work and slave away at a job you don't like to make money, right? A lot of that is downloaded old paradigm, right? And there's things we can do to actually activate wealth consciousness in our own DNA. Uh, the work by Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about epigenetics, and he proves it with science. This guy is a master. He's a genius, and he teaches how you can actually activate and trigger 
different parts of your DNA to step into something good versus something bad, right? How you can trigger and activate a disease to manifest on your DNA, or you can trigger and manifest something fucking amazing to happen in your life or radiant health despite your family history of all having obesity or type 2 diabetes, right? So, so again, I'm getting off track, but I, 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 this part of the live, I just want to ensure you that there is ample science that explains how this works, right? The work also by Greg Braden, like, wow, amazing genius. Okay, Dr. Emoto too. <laughs> okay, so back to the chakras. So we're talking about the root chakra right now because we also are talking about money and abundance. That's part of the talk. That's part of um, the crystal healing talk tonight. So think about root chakra. It's, it's, for, it's a created, it's, it's fully developed from the time we're in the womb to about three years old. And that's when our subconscious mind is just downloading, downloading our um, belief systems that are running that we don't even realize are running. Our conscious mind doesn't necessarily know what the subconscious mind is telling us, right? Because that's the program that we absorbed through our environment and the people around us in those formative years. So what if in those formative years you were around a family that was fighting over money? What if there was always like challenge or just like this like frictional energy or worry about money or not enough, right? What if that was really the thing that your mind was being thrown, right? Then you might have a chakra that isn't a root chakra that isn't optimally flowing. You might have a chakra that would benefit from certain crystals that resonate more strongly with it to ensure that it is balanced, right? Okay, so are you still with me with all this? Okay, uh, so for example, when I started getting into the world of chakras and crystal healing, by the way, I'm a Reiki practitioner and certified crystal healer, so I, I do study this stuff, so I'm not all, <laughs> all just uh, blowing smoke, but in anyways, when I really got into it and I would measure how my own chakras were working, I discovered that I tended to have open higher chakras but it was my lower chakra that would seem to get out of balance, right? And that would make sense when I think about my family dynamic when I was growing up. Very, very poor, right? Always arguing and fighting about money. Never enough money and definitely not enough money to do something that would bring me joy or happiness, right? And so that's why for 10 years I worked in my corporate career where I made good money, but I didn't believe I could make that kind of money, let alone more, doing what I love. But I've uh, I've completely squashed and dissolved that subconscious imprint, and now I make probably 2.5 times more than I made at the peak of my corporate job doing what I love. Part of what I love is working with crystals, right? <laughs> so it's really powerful when you can start dissolving the subconscious imprints. So here's an example, lady. This is tectite. Tectite is a black crystal and it's not really a crystal it's it's a meteorite it's from outer space but it resonates strongly with the root chakra and it's particularly helpful for working with the root chakra if it's actually so out of balance that it's not spinning in its natural direction but if it's spinning in reverse and when you've had um, particular childhood trauma that would be affecting the root chakra that's when it can actually start moving the opposite way and that's what was happening with mine and so that's one reason I purchased Tectite. Now, in terms of other crystals that work with the root chakra, uh, any crystal that is red or dark in color, like black or brown, also has a stronger resonance. So if you're feeling like you have some, some wonky energy going on about your money story and maybe you're having some of those thoughts of money is hard to come by and I'm not good with money and there's never enough money, you might want to tap into a deeper sense of safety and security feeling rooted and that your needs are being met. And one way to go about doing that would be working with smoky quartz, tectite, black tourmaline. This is red jasper. All of those crystals that have a, a, a stronger sync up effect with the root. Okay. Um, another, how do you figure out what kind of health your chakras are? And, oh, that's a great question. So, uh, well, the one way that gives you like very, very clear, precise is um, clients that I do Reiki with, Sarah. Sarah was asking, how do you know how your chakras are balanced? 
um, when I have a client laying on a table and I'm doing Reiki on them, first I'll take my pendulum and it has a terminated point and I'll hold it above the chakra and I will wait for it to start catching the energy, the energy vortex, and it will start spinning depending on what the chakra is doing because it's catching that energy current. So a blocked one will just kind of move like this. An open one will move like this and a really open one will move like that. At the end of a Reiki treatment, no matter what, no matter if they were all blocked, they're always all open. Um, and spinning beautifully, open and balanced. Now our chakras can be open and balanced one day and the next day three of them can be closed and it can be something like you watched a scary movie. So they're always moving and changing, but we tend to have a set point of a chakra that it will always kind of acclimatize back to that unless we do the work to uh, dissolve the subconscious imprint that could be negatively affecting it or just in general um, uh, commit to these practices to really raise our vibration. Okay, uh, now in terms of another way to know if your chakras are moving right or wrong, uh, honestly, it's just by assessing how is your life going, right? Are you always struggling to pay your bills? Is there never enough money to go on vacation to invest in this to do that? That's a sign there's something wonky or not optimal going on in the root chakra, but also possibly the solar plexus chakra. Are you always um, in relationships that don't feel fulfilling and there's something lacking that's a sign there's something going on in the heart chakra okay um i i can send you some links to some resources that i write about all the chakras on my website where i explain attributes that might be at play in your life depending on which chakra okay so now we're going to talk about uh solar plexus chakra solar plexus chakra is also powerful pertaining to our ability to attract money but also our confidence right so with the solar plexus chakra, it's the third chakra up, and it's often depicted as yellow, where the root is like dark or red. And excellent crystals to work with the solar plexus are pyrite and also citrine, like that's in my water. Um, there's honey calcite. Uh, there's rock salt. The, the list goes on and on. And when we tap into the energy of uh, the solar plexus and optimal flowing and open solar plexus, that's when you're going to feel confident in your abilities. That's when you're going to feel motivated like, yes, I got this. I'm going to be able to make my mark in the world. I'm going to move forward on that idea. You have that, that sense of willpower, that sense of drive, that sense of, of ability to follow through. Um, feelings that will be at present uh, in your life with, with um, an open and balanced uh, solar plexus, you're gonna be feeling this, this sense of joy and abundance, not just in the financial sense, although that is part of it, it could also be abundance, just feeling like there's more than enough of, of what you need to feel good in your life. You have an abundance of relationships, you have an abundance of yes money or opportunities, and you're just, you're just feeling really good. Uh, Citrine is just such an amazing crystal because not only is it drawing in those feel-good emotions, joy, abundance, good prosperity, it's also at the same time has the similar attributes of black tourmaline, shungite, and amethyst, and fluorite in how it's very detoxifying and clears off negative energy. So it helps protect you in your own energy, bringing in more good while at the same time simultaneously kind of deflecting off the bad. So all the water I drink has been imbued with crystal energy. So I have a big tank of water that I fill up from the grocery store, reverse osmosis, so that's fluoride free. And depending on what energy I want to work with that week, I'll drop a couple crystals into the actual main bin of water. Um, right now in there, there's amethyst and citrine, but some weeks I'll put in rose quartz. How beautiful is that? Because again, think about that, all of that water, our body's now taking on that frequency as we drink it of that rose quartz. And it's common that I'll also put shungite in the water because shungite is very rejuvenating to the body and it really helps clear off the emfs those uh harmful magnetic frequencies that aren't good for us um make sure before you start putting rocks in your water to research is it a toxic stone some stones can't go directly in the water some can uh if you want to work with this stone um without uh like let's say jade jade is an excellent crystal it's amazing uh studies show like okay this is straight out of gaia off an interview of a scientist studies show that jade helps activate production of collagen in the skin that that's that's how we look youthful so think about why people are buying those jade rollers on their face it's not because you're ironing out and smoothing a wrinkle 
the jade is crystal healing. People don't realize they're buying it for crystal healing. People don't realize they're buying it for actually the metaphysical side effect of it. They just think it's like, oh, it's good for my face. No, it's crystal healing that's activating a shift in you because of the energy energy at play, the energy that's actually activating the collagen production. There is a man explaining this on Gaia, which was incredible. So if you want to work with Jade, but you don't want to um, uh, risk putting it directly in the water because it has the leaching of toxins, you can take a piece of Jade and put it right outside a glass jar and um, and then fill the jar with water. And the Jade through the glass is still going to be able to imbue it with the same frequency. That method is called indirect method because there's some crystals that I want to turn into an essence and, and use and spray under my tongue or around my aura. And I do that by the indirect method. Uh, fluorite, for example, it's an amazing um, crystal to work with, but you can't put it directly in your water. Uh, red Jasper, you can't put directly in your water. Uh, green Amazonite, you can't put directly in your water. Um, it, do, do you guys have any questions? What what crystals are safe to put right in your water? What crystals aren't? I, I off the top of my head, I know most. Uh, smoky quartz, it's super safe. You can put it directly in your water. Okay, so so back to solar plexus, tapping into confidence and abundance and wealth. Um, jade is also excellent for prosperity, not just for that youthful glow. So what are ways that you can incorporate more and more of these crystals to work on those energies, the root and the solar plexus, day-to-day -day life? Uh, okay, so it's not just meditation. It's not just holding it in your hand like this, but, but it's putting it in the water like I described. But get this, ladies. Think about soaking in that energy. Put the smoky quartz in your bathtub water. Sprinkle in some salt. The salt is energetically clearing. So you've had a long day, throw that salt in the bath and it's going to energetically clear you and you're going to come out feeling so much better. Uh, throw in some essential oils. My skincare company, Body Cherish, I make uh, different bath salts and I add essential oils and I actually add uh, crystal essences of Sugalite, Larimar, and Rose Quartz so that you're actually soaking in this high vibration energy that's incredible. But you don't have to buy the salts. You can make your own. You can make salts, add the essential oils, and decide what crystals you actually are going to put right into your bathtub. And then all of your bathtub water, it gets programmed with that same frequency. And I know this might sound like a crock of shit to some people, but honestly, if you get out there and you see the research from the scientists, the leading edge, what's being talked about, if you have a membership to Gaia, uh, oh my gosh, this, this stuff is going to blow your mind, right? Any salt in bath water? Yeah, throw the salt in the bath water. Yeah, absolutely, Sarah. Absolutely. Where do I recommend buying crystals, Juliana? You know what? Depending on where you live, um, You'll, you'll, you might just want to like Google what places are in your community. I'm not sure what city you're from. Um, my crystals are all for, are from all over the place. I've done a lot of traveling, so they're kind of all over the map. Um, there's no really right or wrong answer with that. When you go to the crystal shop, I'm going to warn you, ladies. You might be thinking, well, how do I know which one to pick out? You might go after this video and think, well, okay, I for sure want to get some tektite because I must have a spinning backwards <laughs> root chakra, or I for sure want uh, black tourmaline, or I for sure want citrine because you want to work on these abundance energies. But here's the thing. Your higher self, your body has this innate knowledge that surpasses your consciousness. So when you walk into that crystal shop, you might think you're going there for citrine, but you might have such a strong gravitation to just classic clear quartz. That might be the one that you just want to hold. It feels good for some reason. And I'm going to tell you, that's the one you take home with you. Because the one you're drawn to is your innate, your, your, your like inner knowledge, your, your, your wise guys guide inside, telling you what's most beneficial for you right then. And what's most beneficial for someone else might not be most beneficial for you. So that's where you get to tap into trusting your intuition more and more and more, which is pretty cool because the more you trust your intuition, just like a muscle, it gets stronger. And then pretty soon you never have to him and haw. Well, not never. Pretty soon you don't him and haw as much over decisions. And I was thinking about what makes a successful businesswoman. When I think about the most successful women I know in business, what makes them stand out and be so successful? And what's helped me be successful in my business? 
I, I th th there's an attribute that that's common across the board and it's that that woman is able to make decisions quickly right how often do we him and ha on a decision and we can't we can't move on it and and then we're kind of stuck and we're not taking action but those days where you can just make decisions and and like trust it and then go that that allows you to then take action but being paralyzed by not being able to make a decision because you can't trust what's right to do what's not right to do that prevents you from taking action and action is what takes you closer and closer to that thing you're working toward whether it be your ideal health or your dream career or yada 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 right so the more you use your tuition the stronger it gets and then the quicker you can make decisions which means the more likely you can take action toward creating your dream life right <laughs> sounds easy boom bada bing right okay ladies so i don't want to make this video too long we're already at the 29 minute mark uh any final questions before we wrap it up to the ladies who stayed until the end uh there's there's about a 10 second leg so i'm just gonna wait to see if anyone writes anything and if not that's okay oh i wish you could see all the crystals i have here guys this is one of my favorite too apothelite Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, what are your thoughts about a Himalayan salt lamp? Um, I love it. I love it so much that there's one <laughs> right here. Oh, fuck. That's funny. Yeah, Himalayan salt lamps are awesome. They're awesome for a multitude of reasons. They change the ions in the air. They uh, help offset dust and allergens. Um, they, they literally make the air cleaner. And they also assist with the EMFs given off by the computers. Yeah, so, so super helpful. Uh, I, I, I mean, if you're working from home or you work in an office and you're, you're in front of the computer for so many hours a day, you got to make that space high vibration, right? I always have crystals on my desk. If you follow my Instagram, my Body Church Instagram, I did a video, maybe it was today or yesterday, showing my crystals on my desk, showing my salt lamp on my desk, my plant. You gotta love the space you're in because when your space feels good, you wanna be there. You feel more creative and calm and relax, all those good things. Oh, oh, oh hi, uh, Sierra, I'm so, or Kira, Sierra. Oh my gosh, I always do it wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got nervous and I mispronounced it, so sorry about that, but I'm so glad you're here and watching. I can't really tell who's watching on my end from my vantage point, I just see that uh, the number of people in here. But in any case, I hope this video was great. And um, ladies, if you want to hear more about tips and tricks and ways to effectively raise your vibration, because everything is good in life when our vibration is high, the free webinar I'm running on Thursday, there's um, two sessions. There's an afternoon and there's an evening. Uh, if you haven't signed up already, I know some of you have, but if you haven't, I really encourage you to do so because I'm going to be sharing on the five-step formula to, <laughs> how do I put it in that shell? Five-step formula to literally align with your dream life, that life that feels amazing, a lifestyle that supports the way you want to feel, and a roadmap how you can connect with that dream career as well. I'm going to be sharing specific ways, not just crystals, but other holistic empowerment ways that you can implement in your own life effective immediately in your house to raise your vibration but first and foremost my commitment in the work i do is i have to plan and prioritize what i do to keep my vibration high because i know when i honor and do that everything else flows the health flows the relationships flows the creativity the inspiration the confidence flows but i first have to do what is needed to keep the vibration high right it's so empowering that we have this ability to create the life we want. It's amazing. Okay, so I'm going to drop a link below for the registration for that. It's 85% full, which means there's like 20 some something seats left. So I hope to see you there. It's going to be a fun and interactive environment. And I hope you guys have an amazing Monday. And I will talk to you soon.